My name is Mike Howard, and I'm a sales engineer at Med2 Connectivity. Today I'm going to show you how to configure the Salesforce ODBC driver for Windows. This tutorial assumes you already have the driver installed. If you've not yet installed the driver, feel free to check out our video tutorial on how to install your Med2 Connectivity ODBC driver. The most common way to configure a driver on Windows is to create a DSN, also referred to as a data source name. This is done using the ODBC administrator program that came with your install of Windows. As you can see, there will be two versions of ODBC Administrator installed in your machine, one for each bitness. Make sure to use the version that matches the bitness of the driver and the application you want to use. Once in ODBC Admin, you have the option to configure a user or a system DSN. For this demo, I'll create a system DSN, but the process for creating a user DSN is the same. Clicking on the Add button will display a list of the drivers installed in your machine. So in our case, we're looking for the Simba Salesforce driver. Double clicking or clicking finish will launch the DSN configuration dialog. The DSN configuration dialog is where you set your connection settings. The first setting allows you to set the data source name, which is simply the name for the connection that will appear in application DSN lists. If you were to edit an existing DSN, this text box would be blocked out. So Salesforce demo DSN. The next setting is an optional description where you can make comments or notes about your DSN. So DSN for demoing sales force config. The only required configuration for connecting to Salesforce is your authentication credentials, specifically your username and your password. So my username and password. If you have a security token, you can provide that here as well. You have the option to save the security token to the registry by clicking the Save Security Token checkbox. However, the password is not saved to the registry and the user will be prompted for it upon each connection. You can specify a proxy by checking the Use Proxy checkbox and then filling in the appropriate information for the proxy host, port, username, and password. I'm not using a proxy, so I'm going to disable this. You can also configure the driver to use either the System Trust Store or SSL. To use the System Trust Store, simply check the corresponding checkbox. To use SSL, simply disable the system trust store and specify the .pem certificate you wish to use. The driver ships with a default certificate, which can be found in the install directory of your driver. If you'd like to change the certificate, you can do so using the browse button on the right hand side of the text box. The driver supports six levels of logging, which can be found in the logging options of the driver. If you're debugging an issue with our support team, we'll frequently ask you for a trace log to help us to reproduce the issue. To do this, you would set the log level to trace and then browse for a location to store your trace log. A good location for trace logs is usually like documents or downloads or some kind of folder that has relatively open user permissions. Depending on your permissions, saving logs directly to the C drive may fail. It's important to turn logging off when you're not debugging because trace logging is very costly. It can have a massive impact on driver performance. The driver also supports numerous advanced options, which can be found in the Advanced Options dialog. The first option allows you to connect to a Salesforce sandbox. You can do so by checking the Enable Connection to Sandbox URL and then providing the sandbox URL. Again, I'm not actually connecting to a sandbox, so I'm going to disable this. The Salesforce driver contains parsers for both the SQL and SQL languages, so you can choose to write queries in either SQL or SQL. When provided with SQL, the driver simply passes the command through to the server. However, when given SQL, the driver uses their own client-side engine to parse the SQL and translate it into SQL. SQL is most commonly used to perform operations that are not currently supported by the SQL language. In this case, the driver will retrieve data from the server using SQL and then perform the unsupported operation on the client side. Because there is an overlap between some SQL and SQL syntax, the driver adopts an order of precedence which is defined by the user. By default, the driver attempts to parse queries as SQL first and then SQL. This is because Salesforce speaks SQL, and if a query matches both the SQL and SQL syntax, it is more efficient to use the provided SQL query than it is to translate from SQL into the corresponding SQL. In this case, the driver will only engage the client-side SQL engine if the operation is not valid SQL. You can change the driver to parse SQL first and then SQL. In contrast to the previous operation, the driver will now attempt to parse everything as SQL before trying to pass down to SQL. This means that only queries that are exclusive to the SQL language will be passed down. The driver also has the option to parse queries as SQL only, meaning that anything that is not SQL will fail. So if you provide a SQL query in this setting, it will not work. 
Um, it also has the option to attempt to parse as SQL only, which means that anything that's not SQL will fail. So if you try to pass it a SQL query, it will not work. So I'm gonna put it back to the default. So the Salesforce ODBC driver supports the use of the Salesforce bulk API, which allows retrieval of up to 15 gigs in a single query by breaking the result into one to 15 one gigabyte chunks. This feature is enabled by default and is engaged if the result set exceeds a certain number of records. This number is set to 30,000 by default. This is the Salesforce recommended value, but this can be configured by the user to be whatever you'd like it to be. For queries that exceed the 15 gigabyte limit imposed by the bulk API, Salesforce recommends using primary key chunking. Primary key chunking is also enabled by default and the driver will use primary key chunking for result sets that exceed 10 million records. This is also the Salesforce recommended default and can be configured by the user right here. Both the bulk API and primary key chunking can be disabled by deselecting the respective checkboxes. So if I wanted to disable these, I could simply just go like this and uh, the driver would not retrieve anything that would exceed 15 gigs. We also provide a report metadata optimization in the driver. This can be enabled to allow the driver to infer metadata from a small sample of data rather than waiting for the entire result set. This increases query performance, but at the cost of inaccurate metadata, and it comes disabled by default. To use Salesforce labels as column names, you can use the corresponding checkbox. This can be used to interact with client applications that require the label and column names to be the same. So by default, the driver will return text data as SQL varchar, to use wide character encoding, check the use SQL varchar instead of SQL varchar checkbox. And this is handy for dealing with data that may include characters from the extended character set. Similarly, numeric types are returned as SQL double by default. If you prefer to use a more precise number type, you can check the use SQL numeric instead of SQL double checkbox. This will report numbers as fixed decimals with a scale and precision rather than a floating point double. So by default, the driver will use the analytics API for reporting instead of rest get requests. The Analytics API provides a rich API for building and retrieving reports. If you find that reporting is failing, ensure that your organization has the Analytics API enabled in Salesforce or disable this option. Sanitized catalog names will cause the driver to strip out any SQL 92 unfriendly character by removing invalid characters and replacing spaces with underscores. This makes composing SQL queries easier by removing the need to escape catalog names. By default, the driver will display catalog names in the metadata catalog functions. So for example, SQL columns, uh, SQL tables. If you'd like to remove these names from these results, you can do so by checking the strip catalog names from the filter agreements. And finally, the last option allows you to disable join passdown. So by default, we pass joins down to the Salesforce server. If you're planning on joining the same large table multiple times in a single query, you run the risk of exceeding several of Salesforce's API limitations. To get around this, you can disable the join optimization and force the join to happen on the client side. This just means that we retrieve less data from your server and reuse that data client side. It's a little bit slower than doing the join on the server side, but it gets around the API limitation. So once your DSM is configured, you can click the test button which will check to make sure that your driver can successfully connect to the Salesforce server. If that passes, then you have successfully configured your driver. To save your driver settings, simply press the OK button. And that's it, your driver is configured and ready for use with whatever ODBC application you wish to use it with. If you have any questions, please check our FAQ section located on our website or email us at solutions at Thank you for choosing Magnitude Connectivity and we hope you enjoy the product.